Hello and welcome to my session about Microsoft Windows Virtual Desktop and how to enjoy the perfect published apps and desktop. I'm happy to be here again, this time virtual. Last year I was in Scotland and I had a lot of fun. So hopefully I will see you all next if you can travel again. So let me first say a big thank you to our sponsors who made this possible, this full event. So thanks to ScriptRunner, DQ Global, Proximo, Redspire, Agilisys and Hitaki Solution. Thanks again for sponsoring this event. It's really a great and awesome event. I really enjoy to speak here. So let me talk a few words um, about myself. So my name is Marcel. I'm working for a consultant company in Germany, in Cologne, and I'm responsible there for, yeah, for our cloud uh, deliveries, cloud consulting, and other technology we have uh, on stock. And our target is it, is it to, yeah, to bring technic technology to customer and help the customer to do their job, to work with IT, and to work with maybe newer technology. Yeah, I'm also um, an MVP for Microsoft Azure, and um, I built a solution that is what I will show you today, that is called WED Admin and a GUI to, to work with WED. So let us start. So the title or the title, how to enjoy perfect published apps and desktop is from the administrative perspective. So I am pretty sure that everybody in this virtual room knows what Windows Virtual Desktop is and how it feels like. So. Today, I will cover the experience from the administrative perspective. And um, I have two main topics. That is, I want to talk about the deployment, how to deploy session hosts based on a golden master. And on the other hand, how to manage WD and not only creating resources in WD, it's more about how to work with these resources, how to manage the user, how to manage the session host after the deployment and how to do in an easy way some administrative tasks. So I guess that there are more than three, but I will show you the three normal ways about managing WVD. The first is to use the Azure portal with um, WVD Spring or WVD ARM. Um, there is an integration integration in the Azure portal, which you can use to um, yeah, to build WVD, the so WVD resources like host pools, app groups, workspaces, and you are able to roll out images, vanilla images or created images um, directly at the virtual machine and then into WVD as a session host. From my experience, um, there are some parts missing, um, which makes it not so easy to work with this um, Azure portal approach. For example, from um, some parts you you need every time you want to roll out a session host, like the domain join user and the password, the OU you want to join, all those things you have to enter with each new deployment. And there are some other things you can not directly do from the Azure portal, like joining a session host um, into a, a, an ASG a application security group, for example. So the experience for admins is it's okay, but it could be better. A second approach is to um, to use PowerShell, and that is the most flexible way to work with WVD because you can do anything, you can automate anything in, in WVD, and you can um, even um, create images from a golden master virtual machine if you have one and you can then later roll session host out in your WD environment based on that image. So it's high flexible and it has a good experience for admins. But maybe not every admin or any, every customer is able to, to work or want to work with PowerShell in that way. So the last approach um, I will mention today, and I know that there are some other, and I'm pretty sure if you have with it or will with it, 
the sessions from uh, Patrick or Simon, they will show you other ways. But my favorite way is to use WD Admin. That is the tool I built around, let me think, 15, 16 months ago, and it was in the in the WD fall area where no portal integration uh, was available. And in this times you have to use PowerShell and there was no other way to work with WD. But over the time I, I um, built new versions from WD admin. So it works for sure. It works in the, in the, in the current WD and in the older WD. And I use it if I'm on the customer side for um, doing POCs. And the most important part in WD admin from my perspective are two things. That is, um, it's easy to um, work with Golden Master, so a template virtual machine, and to roll this out as session host. And on the other hand, it's easy to manage the user. You can see all the users in WD admin. You can lock them off. You can, um, yeah, you can mirror or shadow the user if the user allows this. And you can do mask, um, yeah, multiple tasks or run multiple tasks on session host to make it easier to work with this session host. So that is what I wanted to show you today. I will focus on WD admin and how to work with your WD WD environment. And first, uh, let me mention it's a free solution. It's a community solution I built um, first for my for my own job and um, I'm. Happy that is used by a lot of other people to make it a little bit easier to start in a WD POC and for customer um, maybe later to manage um, to work with a user. So the first thing we have to move, uh, the thing about is an, on how to build session host, the virtual machine, the user uh, sitting on top and doing the work. And my approach and the approach in Azure normally is you have a master VM, a golden master, that is like a template virtual machine. And you can prepare this template virtual machine with Windows updates and, and for WD, you install Avis Logix, the application and other third party tools. And you can do this manually, or you can do this with PowerShell or with another uh, software distribution system. The next step is to this prep this virtual machine to uh, make it um, or to make it or to generalize it. And that is what you even have to do in the Azure portal In the Azure portal on a virtual machine, you can click on generalize. And then the sysprep virtual machine will be generalized. That means you can then grab an image from this golden master and you are done and you have your master ready and later you can roll our new session host based on that image from this master. The bad thing is, if you do that natively in the Azure portal, the master VM, your golden master, is gone. You cannot start the virtual machine again because it's general generalized and it is sysprep, so it will never come. Yeah, it will never start again. So that is, um, in my opinion, a little bit of frustrating because you have to first build a new golden master from your image uh, and uh, and after you have done this you have to domain join this uh, virtual machine and then do the next step and that is a bad way to do because it takes a lot of time so let me show how i do this or wd admin do this in the background it's nearly the same only the third item is a little bit different it starts with a gold master which is domain joined i install all the application, Windows updates, and so on, on this virtual machine. And after this, before the virtual machine is sysprep and generalized, I create, or WD Admin creates a temporary virtual machine in the background, and it does all the next steps with this temporary virtual machine. So sysprep and generalize runs not on the original one, it runs on the temporary virtual machine, which means that everything is fine. At the end, you have an image, and your gold master, your master virtual, master virtual machine is still alive and you can reuse this virtual machine after a week, after two weeks and make some other updates and start and create a new image for your new session host every time you want to do. So 
I guess that is enough for now. Let us let us start with some demos. I guess that makes it a little bit easier. So, but let us start with building an image. And we need what we need for an image. We need a golden master. And I prepared a golden master. And my golden master is in the resource group WVD templates. And it's called Gold Scotch 01. So let me open this virtual machine. Gold. And let me connect to this virtual machine. This virtual machine is a Windows 10 multi session host. It's rolled out as a normal virtual machine in Azure. So it has nothing to do with WVD right now. And I joined the session, um, sorry, I joined the virtual machine to my domain. So all, you know, um, all. Windows Virtual Desktop Session host must be domain joined right now. So this is my Windows 10. There's not so much installed yet. What I normally do to prepare a session host or a virtual machine to become a session host later is first to install some application. And for a test, I make it, I will go an easy way. I go to Unite. That is a service on the internet you can use to to install some application in a really easy way and that is um, the good way um, for for showing demos so let me select the application i want to have i go for what other typical application we like notepad plus plus notepad plus plus and let me select paint.net and i think that is fine for the demo and after this get your night it generates me an executable and that executable will install this two application on my virtual machine so um, what do i need else okay i need Avis logics So let me switch to my keyboard layout, then it's easier for me. So Avis Logic, the Avis Logic sources are on my domain controller in a file share. Seven, six, that must be used. And let me install it as logic app setup. So I prepare my virtual machine, my golden master with FS Logix and all the other application. FS Logic will not enable on this machine because it will only be enabled by group policy, and the group policy are not set to this virtual machine to my master. The group policy is only set to the organization unit containing my session host later. So let us give it a few seconds. So our logic is installed. Notepad plus plus is installed and give it a second. Then paint.net is also installed. And after this, and for sure, normally you would install more application. But after this, I close, I shut down my virtual machine inside from Windows, shut down. And then let me wait for the virtual machine to become stopped. Here's my virtual machine, my gold master. I refresh it. It's running right now. And it will take only a few seconds to become stopped. Okay, let us wait for this in the background. Let me go back to WD Admin. In WD Admin, I can see the virtual machine, my golden master, and I can easily create an image with a right click, create a template image. I give it a name, 
or a Scottish summit. I select the target resource group, the resource group which should contain my image later, that is templates and that is all. So let us check if the which machine is down. Yeah, it stopped. So and then I can click on capture and this will take up yeah, between two and five minutes depending on the size of the installed application and after this we should see a new image called SS1 in the end. Let me open images. Right now there's no SS1 image from today. So that will take a while. In the background WBD admin generates a snapshot from the virtual machine from the Golden Master and with a snapshot WBD admin builds a temporary virtual machine and it runs sysprep and other parts on this temporary virtual machine and after this prep it grabs the image and remove it deletes the temporary virtual machine so at the end i will have an image and i will have my gold master left untouched so let me share with you in a little insight what ha happens in the background after the temporary virtual machine is created it runs a script on this temporary virtual machine doing this prep. And let me show you the script. The script is in the WD admin program files folder. And it is called ITPC WD image processing. Here's a lot of stuff in. And basically there are two parts in. You can generalize an image that is what, what sorry you can generalize a virtual machine that is what happens right now that is the first step generalize and the second step is later if we are rolling out some session host it runs the script again with join domain with a parameter join domain and the other parameters which are used to do the domain john and another thing to build a session host out of the image so that happens later but let's uh, let us let me show you one part we are jumping here in this generalized part and here's some things in um, and here's some important thing also in because if you sysprep windows 10 or if you have ever sysprep windows 10 maybe you know that it sometimes doesn't work there are different reasons why sysprep fails sometime, sometimes on Windows 10. One is if you have um, universal apps installed and used, but not for all users, then sysprep will not work. That is covered by the script. It removes the part of checking the universal apps before sysprep runs. So that is an important part. And if you um, optimize your deployment by yourself, Feel free to copy in the parts you need to to um, yeah to convince this prep to work even with universal apps from the script. And the other part is, this prep sometimes um, run into an error if you this prepped a this prepped which machine after a while, and if you have run Windows update before the last this prep, you maybe run into an error that sysprep mentioned that some something is corrupt and that is what happens here in this part that is what i discovered uh, last week um, it removes this um, this um, value in the registry um, which caused sysprep to fail in this part and the last thing i want to mention you can put the Windows 10 virtual desktop optimization packs from the VDI guys into the C program data optimize folder and if it's there on your golden master it will be run short before sysprep is executed 
and later after the deployment as a session host it will run again to make sure that every everything is is optimized as best um, is optimized as best yeah and i'm pretty sure you know the vdi guys let me share shortly the link that is github.com the virtual desktop team and the optimization tool that is for um, windows 10 to yeah to stop some um, services which you normally not use uh, will not use in a in a multi-session environment and some other part but i recommend to to i recommend really to um customize the settings the settings are in the program file folder itself and you, you can customize the different handlings to to prevent that some things are disabled or removed like the calculator that is what i have done on my golden master i downloaded uh, this um this tool from um from github and i modified the settings to match um to match that what i want ex what i want to act what i expect later in my environment so let me close this so let us check what happens. WD Admin deallocated the virtual machine. It creates a snapshot and from the snapshot a temporary disk and from the temporary disk a temporary virtual machine. And it now runs the PowerShell file remotely via the Azure API on the temporary virtual machine. So the, all the sysprep stuff and um, the customizing before happens right now. And after a while, we will get an info that the image is available. So let us wait for this. So our image is ready. And the image was created based on the golden image, um, sorry, the golden master. And we are a temporary rich machine. So our golden master is untouched and we can reuse it later. So that is our new image. Before we are starting rolling out new session host, let us create a host pool as a new as a new target. So host pools. Let me generate a new one. Right click host pool, add a shared host pool for multi session. Let me name it Summit Twenty One. And a location a resource group for my new resource for my new host pool that should be design 2 and i want to have the metadata stored in central us so later we will see that even some other locations are available that will take a while and um, and we have to wait for the final release so let us go for central us and wvd design 2 at the resource group Click on OK. There's our new host pool. Let me configure it. Breath first as a loop lens is fine. Let us limit the sessions to 10 per host. And then let us create a desktop application group so that we are able to log on later. Add a desktop group. Or let me name it Summit 2021 Desktop Application Group. And expand and then let us set the permission to all users so that all users can access our new desktop later. all users and the last part we have to do before we can start or before user later can access the host pool is to link the desktop application group with a new, new or an existing workspace let me create a new workspace summit 2021 design 2 central us so that must be the same data location metadata location 
like the host pool. And then link the app group. Summit 2021 desktop application group. Okay. So that is all we have to do. And then we can start rolling out fashion host based on our golden on our image based on our golden master. So right click the session hosts node and roll out session host from image. I give it a naming schema WD summit and this is used to the last part is used for counting up the numbers WD sum something that looks better and then let us select the image that is our image from today and the host pool that is summit 2021 the subnet that is important uh, for the network so that the virtual machine the session hosts are later connected to the right subnet that is in my case this one and i select a target resource group for the virtual machine and i have to select a disk size so i go for standard ssd and i want to roll out the virtual machine size let me go for ds 3v2 so you can configure some other parts here like the disk size that is not unimportant and if you want to have more IOPS and more performance on the disk, you have to um, to hire the size of the disk. Mm -hmm. That is, yeah, that is as it is. That is <laughs> Azure typically. So if you want to have a higher performance, you have to go up with the with the storage capacity for the disk. Mm -hmm. And what we need else are a user to join the virtual machine later to the right organization unit in my domain that is what I have pre-configured and that is stored um, secretly in my users registry so that is not what I have to enter each time I want to roll out a session host and what we can do else is we can um, directly configure um, Azure monitor or install Azure monitor with the right configuration or some other parts like use as a related accelerated network cards and so on so let me start with this, I want to have five new session hosts for my new created host pool based on our golden master. And then let me click start rollout. So it starts rolling out the five new virtual machine, which becomes a session host later. So don't let us wait for this. We can left this in the background. Let me show some other parts we can do with WD admin. So for sure you can see the users are logged on to one of the session hosts in um, all of your um, host pools. You can do this clicking on session host v2. This shows you the currently logged on users. So these five users are logged on to my host pool design. Five sessions are running and what you can do, yeah, uh, I, I bet you know it. You can select the users, you can filter the users and then check the user and you can then maybe send the user mes message message to select it and then the message will appear in the session of the user. And you can do other parts like disconnecting user, logging off users. Let me log off to users and that is what is, I guess it's normally used over the day um, from the help desk or from an administrator to manage the user sessions. After refresh, we will see that the users are locked off. So, and I get a message in my user session. So, let me show you what we can see as well. You can see storage accounts in the environment. And this shows you if you refresh the data on a storage account, you will see 
the VHDX or VHD a session host is used to map the user profile to the session host. You can see here the different profile containers from the users um, which are locked on to my environment. And if you have some trouble, for example, um, a session host is uh, crashed and the profile is still mapped and not uh, f um, in, is not and didn't become free after a while automatically, you can delect you can select this this files and you can then terminate the files that ends the file handles in the backend of the storage account and that can help you um, to reset a user an orphan user session which code that a user cannot log in to another session host while the profile disk is still in use or it seems to be in use from this crashed session host so in this case i think the session host because it's not crashed will later reconnect to this file so that is an easy way to work with open or yeah with open files which should be closed or no longer be open while the session host died and um, with wd admin this is one example what can we do next yeah important is in an environment and let me show this on, on another host pool let me go back to my design host pool and if you expand the host pool you can see um, the session host you can see it here in the list or on the right side in the list and currently we have five session hosts in this host pool and three of them are in the drain mode what we can do is we can select, select a session host or multiple session hosts and then we can start the session host we can stop the session host or restart them and we can even remove a session host that means um, if you remove a session host it is removed from wbd and you will be asked to remove the virtual machine um, also that if you if you if you select this this would delete the virtual machine and its components like the disk and the network card from azure so be careful what you do in this um, uh, with this item. Another part um, I built in is I added an option to run scripts on the session host. And let me do this for this three session host. You can select, select some session host and then you can select custom scripts. And here are some scripts. The scripts are all in the program file folders and they do different jobs and you can add new scripts to do your task on the session host i have some for example to enable rdp short path which is um, still in the preview and you can and that is often what i often use for vdi environments you can trigger windows update to install new updates on the selected session hosts so let us go for enable RDP short path and I switch back to logs that we can that helps us to see what happens. And I want to run the script on this three session hosts and then let us click on run script. I get a message that is fine. I want to do that. And now WBD admin use the Azure API to run the script remotely on the selected session hosts. This will take up to yeah one to two minutes um yeah that is it's a time the the agent the the azure agent on the session host on the virtual machine needs to um to query the new comment and to execute the comment so let us wait a few a minute to so that was faster than expected it takes around a minute so this scripts an ALDP short pass on the selected session host. That was the method. The other me message um, we see right now are from our rollout. So the session hosts are, I guess, ready in a minute or two. So what I did here, I run the command, the custom scripts or scripts on session host. You can do the same thing if you scroll up to the Azure node on top. And if you click on virtual machines, 
you will see and you can refresh it here you can refresh it you will see all virtual machine in all connected subscriptions with a power state this comes from the resource graph api so the data you can see here are maybe up to a minute older keep that in mind but you can do all the same um, you, you can manage this virtual machine like the session host you can select the virtual machines you can start stop or remove that means it deletes a virtual machine and you can even run a script so you can run a script only on on virtual machine which are switched on let me select two session hosts but you can do it on any other kind of virtual machine it's not needed that this is a session host and let me select the same custom script which restarts as a update service as an example run it and then the script is applied remotely via the azure api on the virtual machine if you work with wvd or on azure and um, if you create virtual machine delete virtual machine you will often see that you have orphaned resources that means maybe you have a, um, a virtual a virtual disk without a computer or you will have or you will see that you have um, network cards not no longer connected to to a virtual machine because you have deleted the virtual machine you can figure this out if you if you have you can figure out if you have this if you go to azure right click and then clean up unused resources preview preview will show you the resources and later if you click on clean it will remove the resources so yeah please first check that you don't um, remove maybe um, a disk which is not attached attached to a virtual machine, but you will, but but you have saved for later use. Then um, don't use this function. So in my case, I have uh, some NICs and some disks in my subscriptions, and I want to remove them, remove this resources with clean, and this will delete this NICs, this orphan NICs, and even the orphan disk take a while and makes us it will work or it will delete this in a synchron way so that you are able to uh, to to close wd admin if you have um, clicked um, if you don't if you don't want to do that what um, you have clicked before so this will runs in the background so one new feature i added um, yesterday is um, a feature i i really missed and um, let me show you this. I have one slide. You know that you have different disks in Azure and that you can use different disks in Azure for your virtual machine and the disks have different performance and different prices. Um, I will show you the, the three common disk types and yes, you know you have um, other disk types like ultra disk and even the ephemeral disk which is really cool um, even for for windows 10 multi-session hosts but let me come back to the no three normal disk types you have standard hhd that is um yeah it's it's a disk which is not so performant um, and it costs in this case it costs up to six dollar for 128 gigabyte a month around six dollar then you have the faster disk that is what i typically use um, if i start a poc that is the ssd standard ssd and 128 gigabyte costs around ten dollar so it's a little bit more expensive but faster and you have the premium ssd and 128 gigabyte premium ssd which a better performance than standard ssd cost around 19 dollars so the disks cost every minute the disk exists even if you deallocate the virtual machine if you deallocate a virtual machine then the compute um, costs stop but the disk will continue costing and in my environment and i bet in other environment as well the amount of disks 
costs over a while because you have a lot of disk even if you don't use the disk and that yeah and that that can summarize up to to a higher amount of money you have to pay each month and i thought by myself yesterday it would be a good option to always have standard the the cheapest disk if the virtual machine is switched off and to then convert the disk on the fly before you start the virtual machine into the type you want to have like standard ssd or premium ssd and at the end of the day if you do it in the opposite way if you deallocate your virtual machine which runs um, with premium ssd then back to standard hdd to save the costs uh, for the disk while the virtual machine is not running and that is what i have built in into wd admin and let me show it so let me first go back to the azure portal and let me show you the virtual machine we are rolled out um, as a session host this is wd dash summit and let me open one of the virtual machine 001 and the 001 give it a second uh, let me switch to another one and then back and the 01 has a disk of type standard ssd so the disk for standard ssd costs me around ten dollar each month and let me change this to have it more dynamically and you can do this if you go to tax and add a new tag called wd dot advanced disk type so it must be exactly in this way and then enter the name of the disk type you want to have if the virtual machine is running let me go for premium rs and click on apply so the next step what we have to do is we have to do this inside from wd admin so that it works i open wd admin i first click on reload all to make sure that wd admin reads the session host and the virtual machine and see that there is a new tag on some or on this um, virtual machine <clears throat> so let me go to the host pool or you can do it even on the um, on the virtual machine node virtual machines node and let me first stop the virtual machine so the vm is still located what oh, took took ages right now okay it's still located and after this the which machine the disk of the which machine is changed from in this case standard ssd to standard lrs which is an hdd this took only yeah for four seconds four to five seconds to convert a virtual machine uh, the disk size of a virtual or the disk type of a virtual machine so let us check this in the azure portal as well the disk ssd let us refresh this is standard hdd so it costs in this case only around five to six dollars a month and not um, up to ten dollar so a good way to do this and um, or let us check um, check another way we define that the ssd 
should be premium if we start the virtual machine. So let us go back. Click once refresh to see that the session is unavailable. Select it and let us check if WD admin change the type of the disk to premium. Click on start. Yeah, changing this type to premium LIS. Ready. <laughs> Only a few seconds and then the VM is starting. Let us check it back in the Azure portal. HDD to premium SSD. Thank you that I that I was invited to this um, to this great event. Hopefully I see you the next time and hopefully and I'm pretty sure you will enjoy the rest of the day and I wish you a good virtual stay and hopefully see you back and live off live uh, offline in in real um, in the next in the next months. Thanks a lot. Bye.